What's up, Sean? Cool. <laughs> Thank you. All right, guys. Well, welcome to another episode of That Crypto Hustle Podcast. Super excited today to have with us Sean Donato, who is the CEO of Opti Token. So, uh, Sean is actually a true veteran. He's been in the crypto blockchain space for quite a while, a rare dinosaur in the space. So super honored to have you on the show today. Thanks. Thanks for having me on, Luna. Super excited. So a question in everyone's mind, what were you doing when you first discovered Bitcoin and I guess the potential of cryptocurrency? Do you remember that day specifically or are you completely blank? Yeah, I do actually. I, I was sitting on a toilet. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, going through your you know, iPhone. I, just, I, didn't, I never mentioned that part, but I was reading The Economist. Um, I was uh, I was in junior college, and uh, I wanted to go to uh, you know I wanted to finish that, transfer over to like a you know get a find a bachelor's program on in economics. Uh -huh. And so I thought, um, why not subscribe to The Economist and read that? I don't know. I thought I found a lot of stuff in it interesting. So uh, one time there was an article about. Uh, uh, Bitcoin, and it was um, it was kind of mentioned. It was really, uh, it was kind of like, hey, like you know, this could be something type of article, um, and it was pretty early on. But that that's when I uh, I first found out about it. But I, I I didn't get involved until I didn't buy any coins until like I don't know, end of 2013, I think. So when you like read that article, what was what what did you do after? I mean, you you knew it was uh, cryptocurrency, or I guess you probably had like some general information about it. But did you start going on Reddit groups? Like, what what were some of the things you did? No, Reddit really annoys me. Um, people argue <laughs> on there. Uh, I'm not a fan. Yeah. But you can find. Some, I mean, sometimes you can actually find some like legitimate like research or like you know some you might find analysis you might find interesting that's like user, uh, um, you know, it's user, user content, not like you know mainstream, uh, uh, you know, like news agencies. Uh, anyways. Um, no, I just uh, I thought it was interesting, but at the end of the day, I didn't really understand like how they, how it worked. Uh, they broke it down pretty well, actually, if I recall correctly. But uh, I, at the end of the day, I still didn't fully grasp it uh, what what the blockchain thing was, etc. So, but I, I definitely I thought it was interesting too. I know that I was like, oh, that's cool. Um, so how is the yeah? So I mean, in your eyes, since you've been in this for so long, how has the market evolved overall? And I mean, a big thing that is in everyone's lips currently, and obviously the media is not helping, is the fact that we've experienced quite a bear market this year. And so what what's something you could tell individuals who are just starting out as far as like making them understand that they shouldn't be freaking out based on some of the things that you've seen in the past? I don't know. I don't want to tell people not to freak out, though. I don't, I don't really um, – I don't know if that's uh, – Good advice, you know, because uh, mm -hmm. you know, at the end of the day, it's a it's risky, you know, it's risky, uh, risky business. It's a risky set to uh, you know try to uh, profiteer with uh, at the end of the day, Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't advise that it's not not to worry by any means. Um, but uh, I would say that uh, you know, as far as uh, when you're, you know, investments tend not to move up in straight lines. You know, I will say that. Um, you know, the fact that this year is really bearish uh, shouldn't surprise anyone. If you look how bullish it was last year, uh, like you know, the, the whole market was extremely parabolic. So, yeah. Um, so, what yeah. is currently going on in the market, in your opinion? Uh, well. We're sitting in the 6,000s range. There's a ton of buy support here. Um, a lot of money's coming in at this level. Um, you know, where it's coming from, I'm not sure. I don't really think it's retail investors here so much as like, uh, you know, I don't know, like like uh, corporate interests, like uh, miners, um, you know, potentially even some institutions may think it's a bargain buy here. So they're, you know, buying at certain levels and or you know accumulating at certain levels, um, but there's definitely a lot of buy support here. As you can see, like if you look around six thousand, it really has a lot of trouble dropping below. Um, it did drop below briefly one time, um, 
and ever since it's just tried to you know it's just tried to test it and uh, yeah. it's a battle here. I mean, yeah. some right, and some of the speculation and a lot of individuals are excited about the fact that there's probably going to be more institutional money coming into the space, uh, especially with different projects. Which is why, so, I mean, there's a lot of also speculations that ICOs are dead, long live security token offering for next year. So, I mean, you, you raised an ICO and you have an ICO project. Like, what's your opinion about the following? Um, I think ICOs are cool. Um, I'm not, I don't subscribe to the idea that they're all scams. I don't, um, Subscribe to the idea that it's somehow bad for the industry, you know, um, I really think that uh, a lot of big industry names are kind of like abusive in that and that um, You know to the idea that that cryptocurrency should be limited to Bitcoin alone is like really like bizarre um, You know is it uh, Is the industry ripe with uh, like a lot of like You know like kind of like fraud and corruption and like um, shitty projects that kind of maybe, you know, are, are just kind of annoying and like can kind of, you know, it's like, oh, like, man, it's, you're giving us a bad, you know, image. Yeah. But, you know, so was the uh, so was the dot com boom, you know. Um, I mean, to say the ICOs, uh, you know, the cryptocurrency should just be Bitcoin is like saying that the ICO uh, or I'm sorry, the the dot com boom of the you know 90s should have only been Microsoft, you know, and yeah. everything else was a scam. Apple was a scam, you know, Apple was a scam. Uh, everything, you know, I mean, you could look at uh, Bitcoin like a Microsoft, and you could look at Apple like an Ethereum, you know. I mean, really, like, so what, you know, what, what what's the beef with Ethereum, you know? Um, they they pioneered an ICO, you know. They made something new in the space, you know. Uh, there, there needs to be capital to flourish, you know, like capital needs to come in for like stuff to flourish out of this, you know, like, yeah, a ton of it's going to be waste and scams um, and, you know, it's going to die, but like some stuff is going to like flower up, you know, and uh, it's so, important that this is, this is how that works. So would you consider yourself to be in the camp of regu having more regulations to, to help that process so there's less scams or do you think it's in the consumer's own like the consumer essentially have to have to do their own research to determine whether or not a project is a scam like which camp do you consider yourself to be in I'm not uh, uh, I, I don't think that uh, as far as investments go I think it's natural selection mm -hmm. you know this is like like I don't need uh, I'm an American citizen I don't need the SEC to tell me where I can and can't put my money mm -hmm. um, what it does is it, so so okay institutional investors can invest in a lot of the pre-sale projects happening and stuff like that, but I can't. And what you're seeing is like, then you see them turn into flips where they, they invest a huge discounts and projects. I was above at pre-sale projects. And then they actually, then later they flip their bags to, uh, you know, retail investors uh, on exchange at a huge premium. Mm -hmm. So, you know, retail investors are still holding the bags. They just happen to pay more for them. So, it, you know, it's not, I don't see who it's, who's being protected or, or how, I mean, you know, if someone's out investing in, you know, BitConnect or something like that, you know, like, I'm sorry, but that's natural selection, man. Uh, you know, it's just like, you know, if you're investing in a shitty penny stock, you know, I'm sorry. Like, you know, that's bad investment. That's, you know, investment's not supposed to be like, you know, somewhere like where, you know, like, like as far as I know, you know, investing is about risk and reward. So. Right. So what, what's the best place for someone to educate themselves if they're interested in, and projects that are a little bit uh, riskier, if you will. Like, what's what's a good place to find the info? Because there's, I mean, the problem with crypto, in my personal opinion, is that there's just so much wealth of not, of information, and a lot of this fake news as well. So, I mean, I'm sure, like, as you sort of get to learn the space and train your eye, you you understand better what to look for. But as someone who's been in the space for so long, like, what are some of the recommendations you could give someone who's starting out in the space? Um, well, I think the idea that somebody has to go and invest in altcoins, like low cap altcoins or like ICOs, uh, is not really a good idea, uh, to be honest. Um, I do think that if, you know, finding like, like finding a valuable project, um, that, you know, yeah, you're getting at the ground floor at a value level, 
um, having a few of those or a small amount of money devoted to that is like, that's great. That's really, it's fun. You know, it can be really profitable. It's kind of exciting. I love, and you know, I, I think that's what, what's kind of cool about investing in general. Um, you know, it's like a, it's like a roller coaster ride, man, you know, but the thing is at the end of the day, if, if you're going to have some money devoted to stuff like that, um, I, I'm a big fan of like going to, uh, conferences and stuff like that and actually meeting the, the people, the team, the project, seeing it in person, you know, talking to them, like ask them a ton of questions. Um, because, you know, talking to people on a telegram channel or on Reddit, I mean, like at the end of the day, I mean, you don't know who you're talking to and, um, you can't look the person in the eye and, you know, kind of like, you know, get the same kind of responses to your questions, uh, as you would in person. Uh, so that's, that's something I would actually advise. And, uh, what are your personal thought about the fact that Ripple is sort of going in third place? Over the, like, so there's just a lot of controversy because, I mean, obviously in the crypto community, Ripple sort of, uh, the central, centralized child, if you will. Like, do you have like a, any personal beef with it or? No, I don't, man. Um, because uh, they're doing their own thing, you know. It's like a, it's like a startup doing their thing, you know. And um, you know, if it's like if someone doesn't like it, then ignore them. Uh, do I? Am I a huge fan of Ripple? No, not really. I'm not like a fan of like. Um, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that irks me about them, you know. Um, but the stuff irked me about the, I, I, when Ripple first started, there was um, something really cool they had going on, where you could actually earn it by uh, donating some of your you know computer power to the World Community Grid. WCG and um, this was like really long time ago and they kind of canned that and after they did that I was upset at Ripple you know I was kind of like hey like you know what like I thought this was something cool where I could kind of get on something early on and like earn you know and why they stopped that initiative I'm not sure but you know they did and uh, you know they kind of turned more centralized like a ton of it's you know all pre mine like like the founder and the team I know they own a really large port portion of coins as um, compared to some other projects maybe or compared to what people think a project should own which I'm not sure what, you know, where that number comes from or what you know how that's you know decided but um, I, I also didn't like that you know they don't require banks to use their token to use their platform however uh, that's not something that's uh, concrete that can change mm -hmm. so the idea that they don't have value because of that is like kind of like well hey like you know be careful because if they do all of a sudden make, you know, th that requirement, then, you know, what if they get to a critical mass where they have all these clients and they say, hey, well, actually, you got to use the token now, you know, you got to use the coin now. Um, so lack, of, lack of transparency, use. essentially. Sorry? Lack of transparency. Um, no, I wouldn't even say that. I think they're pretty transparent. I would say lack of utility at the moment, but that you know, that, that might not there might not be a lack of utility in the future. And then also, I know they had a new product uh, launch recently, and I, I read I read an article on it, but I haven't got to research it a ton. But I think that may be a step toward requiring kind of like the use of um, the token. But uh, but don't quote me on that, as I have to I have to research uh, their latest product launch um, because yeah, that that will add a ton of utility to them and make them really valuable, you know. Yeah, so Ethereum is experiencing quite a bit of like scalability issues right now, which is affecting a lot of these like ERC20 token projects. Do you think this is another reason as well why the market's been a little bit more bearish um, these last few months? Mm. Well, I wouldn't say so, no. No. Uh, so, I mean, do you think, yeah, do you think, I mean, what do you think like Ethereum? I mean, obviously they're working hard on a solution, but what do you think is sort of the future of Ethereum, do you see it long-standing or do you think something else is going to come along, like maybe like an EOS or Stellar? Uh, I think uh, Ethereum is the absolute forefront of smart contracting and I think it's, a, I really think, I've really bought into the project. In fact, if you would have asked me three or four years ago, I was actually really resentful against the project. Mm -hmm. um, and, and part of the reason was because uh, one of my industry partners I've worked with and consulted with for years and worked on projects with David Zimbeck uh, outlined a lot of scalability issues really early on. In fact, he was the first one to actually point out the scalability issues um, and the bloating uh, issues with the, you know, 
the Ethereum blockchain. But um, the thing is, is like this, like what, what, what Ethereum boils down to is if you think they'll scale eventually, properly, and sufficiently or not. Um, and I, I tend to actually think that that is a problem that with, you know, advances in technology and time that will be solved. Um, to think that, um, I mean, when we look at like, my, you know, like microchips and things and like, how, you know, how much more they are able to hold each year um, data wise and all that stuff, um, and how much more powerful they become. I, I, I think that uh, scalabilities and blockchains will probably follow some kind of a path like that. Yeah. So can you tell us a little bit about your project, Opti Token, and what is the vision behind it? Uh, yeah, um, totally. Um, simplicity. Um, you know, I, I mean, one issue with um, – it's kind of like a – economists tend to enjoy the project. Uh, we have a lot in the community. Um, the idea is similar to what kind of a lot of central banks do with um, open market operations, um, except – our idea is to kind of support the price. A lot of um, issues with uh, cryptocurrencies is the volatility. And our goal isn't to be a stable coin. Uh, actually, we think there's nothing wrong with the upside um, of value to a token, right, or a coin. Um, but we want to protect against the downside more. Um, so what we do, in a sense, is uh, we use trading algorithm to uh, generate profits um, is the goal. And then the goal, and then after that, use those profits to support the price, buys on exchange, um, and then either destroy the tokens or permanently lock them away. Right now, we destroy them. We have a burning function. But um, eventually, it, if we have to change things, we will just lock them away permanently forever um, through the use of like a black hole address, a transparent black hole address or something like that. Um, and so do you guys have like several algorithms that you're using to do trading, or how does that work? Uh, well, that's actually a, a goal is to um, is to kind of like uh, yeah to uh, what's the word I'm looking for uh, uh, da, 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 da. Oh, I can't think of the word where you're uh, it doesn't matter okay yeah the goal is to have um, kind of different options or different uh, strategies in play. Um, but right now there's only one algorithm we use and it's. It's, in my opinion, the safest uh, style of trying to beat the market. And when you're trading, you're trying to beat the market, right? When you're day trading, that's really all you're doing is you're trying to beat a hold, uh, a hold strategy. Um, and so there's a lot of ways people trade um, and try to do this, right? There's uh, margin trading on places like you know BitMEX or Bitfinex or wh whatever, you know, Kraken. There's a ton of exchanges you can do this on. Um, and people basically try to ride the swings or they may try to trade an altcoin versus Bitcoin or Bitcoin versus altcoin and, um, you know, see an appreciation that way. I don't like I don't think this is a safe method of trading. I don't um, I, I think that more often than not, it's uh, kind of just speculating, um, although it can be really profitable. Um, I don't think it's I, you know, I think at the end of the day, it's kind of like better to hold, um, in my opinion. So if you're just. If you, you know, people who want to try and tr uh, time Bitcoin uh, price or market swings, uh, I think more often than not, they're going to end up with less Bitcoin than if they had just held. Um, so that being said, I don't, I don't think that's, um, I think it's a more risky play. Um, so the, that's interesting you I, say that, though, because, I mean, I've talked to a few traders and they've commented the fact that the style of trading ha cha has to change based on how the market is. And for instance, I mean, one of the traders I spoke to mentioned the fact that they don't swing trade anymore just because the market has been too volatile and they've had to be just more actively day trading, for instance. So does the algorithm take that into account? And what's your personal opinion on that following uh, statement? I don't, I don't know who said that, but I, I would guarantee, I would love, I mean, I guarantee that they don't, like, I mean, I, I, would, I would love to see like their gains over time, you know, um, from their strategy because uh, nine times out of ten, you know, uh, people are losing money with, uh, you know, trying to beat the market and, they're, you know, they're on BitMEX, they're trying to trade every day, all day and, you know, uh, you know, the market's going to go up today, it's going to go down. I mean, like, come on, like, like people like do that and like at the end of the day, they're out there losing money, you know, and people like, 
yeah, I mean, really, I, if you look at 90% of people's uh, portfolios that do that strategy, you know, consistently, then they, they have huge deficits and they would have been better off just holding or just selling and then being like, hey, you know what? I have a target of X amount of money. I think the market's going to go down to whatever, 5,000. I think it's going to hold there or maybe 3,000. And then, you know, just say, hey, I'm going to reenter here, you know? Um, and, and I guess the only difference in that would be it's not like, you know, day trading. It's like, a, hey, it's a, yeah, you know, that's, I would say that's a much so, better strategy. So how did you learn about trading? I mean, because I think that's, for me personally, that could, what could be off-putting about the cryptocurrency market. And obviously there's just like so many different layers to it. But the trading aspect is a skill that you need to learn and acquire on your own. And most individuals like don't necessarily have the time to read charts and whatnot. So, I mean, how did you how did you learn about it like over time? And what would be your recommendation to someone who has a day job or has other stuff going on, and and is interested in obviously uh, participating and in the market? Uh, well, I, I just, uh, I, it's like my hobby. I don't really, you know, that's like, like I was interested in stocks before cryptocurrency came out and I was kind of a nerd on that whole subject. So, uh, naturally transitioned quite well. And, um, you know, a lot of people like, you know, for fun, they go out and like, you know, I don't know, like play video games or something. And that's not what I do. I kind of, I like to make money and I like to, um, I, I'm fascinated game. by, <laughs> Instead of yeah, I, mean, like, I think it's fun to actually to, to make profit and to uh, invest in something and then see it like kind of like a, like a garden to see it grow. I, I find that really pleasing. I, you know, so that's kind of, you know, I say, you know, if it's not your life, then, you know, I don't know, like, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know, you know, careful trading with it, you know, like, um, you know, it might not become that well if you're, you know, basketball is not your life, you're probably not going to get into the NBA, right? You know, so. Um, yeah, cool. I kind of, you know, just look at stuff all day, um, read articles and yeah. You do I your homework. In. I do my homework, yes. bitch. <laughs> nice. What were you saying? I said, I do, I do my homework, bitch. <laughs> no, 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 but I mean, there's a second part of that question. Um, oh yeah. I was oh, how gonna, can some yeah. How can someone... I mean, I think, yeah, I understand where you're coming from. Obviously, if you want to trade, you have to learn the art and you have to educate yourself. And there's plenty of, I think, blog geeks. Like, there's just, like, a bunch of different uh, resources out there that are available for people. But, I mean, I've also heard the camp of individuals telling me, well, you know, people pretend that they can read charts, but at the end of the day, you know, it's almost like you're, it's not that they can't. It's just at the end of the day, at the end of the day, the emotion, the emotions come and get the best of people. Yeah. Like so, at, I mean, like to think that you're going to trade all, like sit and watch a chart all day and somehow just beat it all day. I mean, it's just not going to happen, man. There's huge money coming in. Like at times, there's like Mount Gox stuff. To, I mean, you just, I mean, it's not like, you know, it's real. Like you should. You, oh yeah, what's going not, on with Mount Gox? Signals. I read, I read a couple articles about. Only not clear signals every day. Like clear, a good, good, like it's like, it's like you know, like a good trade comes like maybe like a few times a week, maybe, mm. maybe less. I mean, that's really what I, I see. Maybe like even less. Or it's like, hey, like look, there's like four indicators saying like we are due for some like for some bear candles, some red candles. You know, that really works like, oh, my gosh, like, let me get some money on this. Like, that's what I like. That's what you want to see. Or the opposite where it's like, you know what? Like, I think we were like at a clear bottom. Like, I'm about to like put a like a long on and um, go heavy. And then with a stop loss under this like little level that we're, you know what I mean? Under these indicators. So that comes, you know, pretty rare. Yeah, no, most definitely. And, and normal people are going to find that. Why, why look for it? You know what I mean? Like, stop, like. Here's my here's my advice, real quick, and not to uh, cut you off. I know you had a no. about some advice, but is to um, if you're interested in cryptocurrency, I would say you know figure out an amount of money that like you're okay with like you know that you can afford to put toward it, and mm -hmm. then make, scale into a position. You know, like this is a fine level to buy a level at. Um, long term, if you're really bearish on cryptocurrency, this isn't a bad price at all. Um, so even if we go lower in the long, you know, like your the idea is that you're looking for Bitcoin to go and like, you know, 
go test like six figure levels, right? I mean, that's really why, like, that's what, if you're bearish on, on, on Bitcoin, I'm sorry, if you're bullish on Bitcoin, that should be some kind of a, you know, a number you're considering. Mm-hmm. Um, otherwise, there's other safer assets. Go invest in real estate. If you're just looking for Bitcoin 20,000 again, go invest in real estate. I mean, what, you know, that's 300%, like, is like, you know, you can get that in real estate, I think. And it's probably going to be safer. So that being said, um, you know, scale in, buy a little here. Um, if the market does dip, great, like buy some more. If your target really is that high, um, if it if this is a bottom and it you know starts going up, we pat you know market picks up steam, um, then yeah, add, add to that position as well. Get a you know a nice average price. That's my advice. Yeah, I mean it's crazy the amount of individuals you don't understand the opportunities that are currently in play and the fact that. I mean, obviously, you have to know which cryptocurrencies to invest in. But people like Tim Draper have been saying that, um, I mean, there, that Bitcoin could hit as far as like 250000 by 20, 2022. And obviously, these are all speculations. But these are individuals who've been in the finance world for quite a long time. And, and the institutional money is coming in. And I guess the press is doing such a good job with putting such negative press out there that again yeah it's it's just really off-putting and people just don't understand the opportunities because i mean yeah it's it's the wild wild west right now was it like that back in 2014 or do you think or you know when you started or do you think uh, it's it's just like really evolved into i mean even just crazier time if you will how was it back then comparison to now as far as the type of individuals you're getting into the space well, I mean, like, uh, it's like, like I, like we talked about earlier, like, you know, like it's not like, you know, I've yet to see like really an asset that just goes up and up forever, you know, mm-hmm. um, I've, I've never seen that before. And if there was, then, you know, like, you know, like financial markets would be different, you know, mm-hmm. uh, completely. I mean, even like suppose wealth assets would probably be different. There's, that's not how, you know, I, I, I assets don't tend to work like that. So, um, you know, Bitcoin twenty thousand was uh, overvalued at the time. It was too much for it. It wasn't worth that much. It didn't have enough uh, people. Not enough people were accepting it or using it as a store of value or as uh, you know uh, mechanism to transfer value. It wasn't being used enough. You know, so it was overvalued. It's coming back down to earth. Um, is six thousand a fair price? I'd say. I mean, like, I don't think it's a bad price at all. Like I said earlier, I, I think it's a pretty fair price um, to open a position at. Um, and in 2014, there was a similar. In 2013, there was a big run up as well. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, the run ups are going to come, you know, and they're not going to probably come when people expect them. It's probably going to be every like three to five years um, that there's, you know, you know, enough accumulation, enough, uh, you know, perfect storm for another run up, you know, enough for development, enough, uh, yeah, just you know, stuff kind of accumulates. No, most definitely. So, well, yeah. Yeah, I was just going to yeah. say, well, thanks for joining us today. And I wanted to ask, like, where's the best place to keep track of your project, OPT Token? Um, I, I would, I mean, come join the Telegram channel. Uh, we have some pretty heated and, like, wild discussions in there. Um, On the Telegram channel. <laughs> I, 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 I'm known to be pretty, I can be pretty uh, mean in there. Uh, <laughs> keep it real. <laughs> That's good. We need someone um, like you. Funny people in there. Uh, friendly people, a Telegram or OptiToken.io is the website. Um, and real quickly, I just want to say, um, Luna, how like uh, you know, great I really think you are, and like how I really think you're like a good heart in the industry. And um, you, I think you know that I've, I've mentioned it like many times. How like I, you know, I really see you as like a powerful, like someone who's going to be a really powerful woman in the industry and has the ability, you know, potential to do that. And, um, you know, and, and I think you, your heart is, is in the right place to, like, you know, you have, like, like we need, like, the industry needs people like you, so. Oh, thank you. you know, oh. <laughs> be on early because I feel like, in a, you know, in a year or two when it's really blown up, like, they'll be like, oh, look at this, like, OG episodes. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes. This is definitely the like OG this. right now. <laughs> Building Probably stage. And I'm so excited that you can be part of it. Thank you, Sean. I'm going to let you go because I know you have uh, lots of stuff going on this morning. But uh, 
please make sure to check out Opti Token. And thank you guys again for joining us and listening to that Crypto Hustle podcast. Bye, guys. Bye, Sean. Bye. Thank you.